Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Wednesday, June 30th, 2021. I am Fredicia Leibard. On Tuesday, June 29th, Nevis recorded an additional case of COVID-19. This brings the total number of cases recorded on Nevis to 16 since the start of the pandemic. 15 of these cases have recovered. The newly diagnosed case is stable and in isolation. This recent case has no history of travel and a media release from the Ministry of Health says the contact tracing process has started and will determine the source of infection. Persons who may have been exposed to someone with COVID-19 or are experiencing symptoms suggestive of COVID-19 infection are asked to immediately self-quarantine and call the numbers on your screen or visit their nearest health center or their health care provider. If they need to see a health care provider, they should call ahead and explain their symptoms before visiting. Symptoms of COVID-19 include nausea, abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, severe headache, body aches, dizziness, fever, cough, shortness of breath, and difficulty breathing. Persons exhibiting any of these symptoms are asked to call the numbers on your screen for specific guidance. The Ministry of Health urges persons not yet vaccinated to get vaccinated. Citizens, residents and visitors are also urged to continue to adhere to the non-pharmaceutical prevention and control protocols. New measures are being implemented at the Alexandra Hospital due to the current outbreak of COVID-19 in the Federation. Premier and Senior Minister of Health, the Honorable Mark Brantley, announced those measures on Tuesday, June 29th. Regarding persons with respiratory illnesses, if you're experiencing a fever, cough, shortness of breath, or other respiratory symptoms, you are to remain where you are and call the respiratory checkpoint at 665-5473. Your information will be taken on the phone and you'll be given the necessary instructions. Persons who have life-threatening emergencies and need the ambulance should call 469-3333. They have given me a list here of some life-threatening emergencies, loss of consciousness, acute confused state, prolonged seizures, severe chest pain, Difficulty breathing, severe bleeding, severe allergic reactions, burns, stroke, heart attack, or any major trauma. In addition, a number of hospital procedures have been suspended until further notice. No outpatient clinics, no physiotherapy, no routine lab services, no routine x-ray and ultrasound, no elective surgical procedures, and no visiting. We recognize again that these decisions and these measures will cause some difficulty for some of us. But we are hopeful that you will bear with us. These measures are for your safety and well-being and have been put in place as a direct result of what has been happening on Sinkits. Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Brantley. In light of the current COVID-19 situation in the Federation, a decision has been made by the Federal Cabinet in collaboration with the St. Kitts Christian Council, the St. Kitts Evangelical Association, the denomination of Seventh-day Adventists, and the Ministry of Ecclesiastical Affairs to record a National Day of Prayer Service. The service will be broadcast on ZIZ radio and television on Saturday, July 3rd from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Citizens and residents are asked to join the National Day of Prayer Service and to unite their prayers with the in intercessory prayers that will be offered for protection during the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season, which runs from June 1st to November 30th. Prayers will also be offered for an improvement in the COVID-19 situation and the healing of the nation at this difficult time.
The following is a notice from the Nevis COVID-19 Task Force for Businesses in Nevis. The Nevis COVID-19 Task Force invites all businesses on Nevis to a virtual meeting at 4 p.m. on Thursday, July 1st, 2021 to discuss COVID-19 prevention and control measures that can be adopted or strengthened to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in the workplace. Kindly make a special effort to attend this very important virtual meeting and take part in the dis discussion as we all do our part to keep Nevis safe. Contact the Nevis Disaster Management Department at 469-1423 to confirm your attendance. Still to come. So I want the people of Cotton Ground to know that they too are part of what Public Works is engaged in. The details right after this break. One Nevis, one Nevis. I couldn't rest. I have to get this thing off my chest. I am King Astro, four times cultural I'm a Calypso monarch, and back to back sink is Nevis National Carnival Calypso monarch. And I took the COVID vaccine because I want to do my part in the fight against COVID-19. I am feeling a sense of peace in my mind. My body is feeling great. So I'm encouraging you all to go out and vaccinate and help us fight this monster, COVID-19. I said, don't wait, vaccinate. For more information or to get vaccinated, visit your nearest health center. This message was brought to you by the Department of Public Health, Nevis. Welcome back. In more local news... The Cotton Ground play field, I think this will be of value to the people of Cotton Ground. Premier the Honourable Mark Brantley is hopeful that the Nevis Island administration will soon be in a position to implement a significant project in the St. Thomas's Parish. This Cotton Ground play field, as you know, has had a very dangerous situation with the wall. It has been falling over now for many years. And we have gone there and looked at it. The engineers have had a look. And we have prepared a request for proposals. We are soliciting now from two engineering consulting firms a design for that perimeter wall to remedy that problem once and for all. Offers are being evaluated, and we expect that by the end of June, 30th of June, we should have the reports and therefore be in a position to move that significant project forward. So I want the people of Cotton Ground to know that they too are part of what Public Works is engaged in. Premier Brantley noted that the falling wall poses a serious risk of grievous bodily harm to the people who traverse that area. And I'd want to publicly commend my advisor, Latoya Jones, who insisted that this was one of the priority projects in St. Thomas's. Latoya Jones is the special advisor to the Premier on Community Matters. The Cherry Garden Soakaway remediation project has been completed. The project commenced on May 25th and was completed on June 16th. We sent in the engineers to do an assessment, and having done that assessment, some 30 homeowners are now much better off, and the health risks that we hitherto had over there have been eliminated. A total of 30, 30 Residential properties in Cherry Gardens received new soakaways. 3 0, 30. The project was budgeted to cost $280,000, but was completed at a cost of $277,470.85. So the project came in about $2,500 short of what it was budgeted to cost. At his June 29th press conference, Premier the Honorable Mark Brantley commended the Public Works Department, which undertook the project. Mr. Alistair Thompson served as a project manager on this project, and I commend him. He did an incredible job. Other members of the Public Works team, namely Mr. Vincent Carey, Lester Liber, Troy Nisbet, Marvin Hamilton, Siobhan Claxton, Keatley Bailey, and Kelvin Wilkin, all contributed Yeoman's effort to bring in this project to a successful conclusion. Let me commend Minister Brand again, but also let me commend the Deputy Premier and the leader of the Nevis, Nevis Housing and Land Development Corporation, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers,
for their efforts and the entire cabinet for supporting this initiative to bring relief to the people of Cherry Gardens. Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Brantley. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Fredicia Liebert. Thank you for viewing.